Hey everyone, welcome to this Distributed Systems 101 introductory course series. So my name is Saurav Pratik. I'm a web solutions engineer at Google. And uh, you must have like heard about my newsletter systems at scale, uh, where I used to post articles on distributed systems and system design. But now what we're going to do is that we will uh, be starting some video content on these series. And this is basically an introductory um, episode. I'll be covering that what uh, things which I'll cover in my entire distributed 101 series. And it will be basically a series of lecture, which will be coming in within some specific period of time within a span of two to three days, I'll be launching new lectures within these series. And yeah, so we'll be covering a lot of things up. So uh, from start, right. So uh, if, if you have to talk about distributed systems, it is uh, basically an interconnection of multiple systems, which behaves like a single system. So if I have to say this, uh, basically, what is distributed systems? So uh, it can be a combination of multiple systems, right? So suppose we have multiple machines here, M1, M2, M3, M4, all of these machines interconnected to each other, or you can say that they can talk to each other, right? So this way, the systems can be interconnected. And this entire mesh can be considered as a single system. So if a client is at some location, then he or she should not know, right? What the entire cluster is all about. He should only be interested in getting the request and returning the desired response, right? So this is, uh, this is basically a high level design of what a distributed system should look like, right? But there is a lot of things happening under the hood, right? This is a very high level idea, but we'll be covering a lot of things, a lot of complications which happen when we try to handle a distributed systems. So before uh, diving into distributed systems, why would we need distributed systems? Why do we need to introduce so much complexity into our system, right? So suppose if someone says that like, hey, build me a system for, to which I can send some request and it will gonna return me some response. So uh, simple uh, layman terms, what it could be is that there can be a basic system, right? And there should be one client. So suppose so this is my client, right? So this is my client, this is a system, it can send a request to it, right? And it can get a response out of it. Very simple, right? Giving a request, having a response. But what if we have a lot of clients like this? So again, I'm gonna clear this, right? So what happens if we have a lot of clients? So suppose there are n number of clients here, right? Da, da, da. Maybe there are a number of clients. So if all of these clients are interacting with this single server or a single machine, then it, it would be very difficult for a single machine to respond to all these users. So in that case, what we can do is that we can use a queue to get the request queued, or we can use multiple machines in order to handle the increasing load. So what we do is that we can introduce multiple more servers into it, right? So suppose we introduced four servers to handle n number of clients. So we have n clients, right? For which we had four servers. Now, what we have to do is that the clients should be able to send the request and should be able to get a response in return, right? So it should send a request and it should get a response in return. So how should we do that? We need to make sure that the request which is sent by the client is uniformly distributed to these machines. Because if we don't 
in a current scenario what can happen is that a majority of clients may send a request to one server while rest of the server sits idle and we don't want that right so what we can do is that let me remove this what we can do is that we can have a another layer in between these two and we can call it a load balancer all right let's name it lb now what lb will do is that we're gonna send so the clients will send the requests which will be sent to the load balancer first all these end clients and then load balancer will decide how to distribute this uniformly within these servers and then these requests will be sent to the server in a uniformly distributed fashion and then these servers will return back these responses to the load balancer so the responses will get returned by the load balancer and then the load balancer will again identify that which client the response should be sent to to which client right and it will send those response to their current correct client right does it make sense i guess yep okay cool so you understand that uh, due to the increasing load or the increasing uh, number of clients we have to introduce this much complications into our servers now again if we have a servers we need to have databases as well right so maybe there can be a database layer and since there are a lot of servers maybe we need to have multiple database shards as well can be the case it could be difficult uh, for a single database shard to have a to have all the data of this much of load so we can have us multiple shards and again these servers can talk to these shards right so these this is the increasing complexity right and this basically this entire structure which we talked about comes into the distributed system so we have a collection of servers we have a collection of database nodes we have load balancers we will build, we'll be discovering a lot of things and if we have these this structure there is a lot of complexity which comes up right so in this di distributed systems 101 course what we'll do is that we'll cover each and every topic in detail this was an introduction now let me clear this up now in this distributed systems 101 section or course what we'll do is that we'll cover a lot of topics so some of the topics we'll be covering at very in-depth level is so suppose this is a parent ds101 course so what you can expect within this so first you can expect me clearing a lot of things on replication right i'll be clearing a lot of things around transactions right distributed transactions and stuff i'll be clearing a lot of things around partitioning right how to handle multiple partitions and i'll be covering a lot of things around databases so you can take it db and internals right a very in-depth a very low level discussion right we can add a lot of lot of things within that right in replication you can have a single leader replication scheme we can have a multi-leader replication scheme and so forth so on right so i hope you got the gist so from now on i'll be um i'll try to continue posting videos or lectures under this series and we'll try to cover each and every topic in details so if you like if you're interested in this you can uh, do do make sure to subscribe this channel like this video share with the other folks who would be interested in this this kind of contents and yeah stay tuned till the next lecture